precisely. And we started to expand government when we started yeah. to devalue dads. Cost and the government became a substitute husband, way. yes. And it, uh, I estimated when I did the calculations for the, for the boy crisis that it costs the US government approximately one trillion dollars a year. And I didn't even do all the ripple effects that I could have done to get to that one trillion dollar um, um, price. But if you think of the costs in the United States, you know that the United States has the highest percentage of, of males in prison of any country in the, uh, any major country in the world. And so, um, just but the cost of keeping males in prison nationwide to the degree that we have them is just a fortune. Uh, the cost of of all the homeland security in response to uh, preventing ourselves from having another 9-11 uh, and an ISIS type of attack um, is enormous and the, the restrictions of freedom are enormous. So if you want to reduce the size of government, if you want to reduce the control that government has in your life, then increase the um, the efficacy of the family, make the American family great again, and create father warriors where boys learn that instead of having to do military service and to die and be to kill and be killed abroad, it's now your opportunity to learn how to, uh, to love and be loved at home. Yeah, just uh, on that issue of the cost, I was staggered to read again your research. The United States jail and prison population has increased by more than 700% between the mid 70s and now. Of that population, 93% are male and they're disproportionately young. Yes even if you were so basis to say that the only thing that matters as a taxpayer is money, yes. you'd have to say, we've got to stop this lunacy. Absolutely. But you won't stop it by not sending them to jail. You'll stop it by helping them not be criminals in the first place. That's exactly right. We, are, we have so much discussion in the United States about should it be rehabilitation in prison or should it be, pop, uh, should it be um, punishment in prison? And that's the wrong discussion. The discussion is how to prevent the boys from the getting into prison place. to begin with. Yeah. And the answer, mm -hmm. fortunately, is fairly easy. Um, number one is get fathers involved along with mothers. It's, it's not like father's good, mother's bad. Um, what children who do the best receive is what I call checks and balance parenting. Just like you need checks and balances in government, um, you may hate Republicans, you may hate Democrats, conservatives and liberals, but it really helps to have both having a dialogue about what's going on. And what, what checks and balance parenting is, is like this. Um, say the child comes up to mom and says, mom, can I go back and climb the tree? Um, sweetie, maybe in a few years, but not right now, you're too young. Um, goes to dad, uh, okay, can I climb the tree? Um, yeah, okay, but be careful, hon. Um, wait a minute, I just told them you can't climb the tree. Um, well, you, you know, you're babying him too much. You're letting him risk falling out of the tree and getting a concussion. You want to do, be responsible for a child with a concussion? That's just cruel. You're insensitive. And then they have a dialogue about it. And if it's a good dialogue where they both hear each other, they might compromise and say, for example, okay, the child can climb the tree, but only up to a certain point, not beyond that. Not these branches because those are too weak. And you've got to be out there under that tree and be willing to sort of um, um, shield them from any fall. Um, and oh, by the way, give me your cell phone. Um, <laughs> so, and yeah. so the god, dad you know, rolls his eyes, all right. But what the child gets is the experience of climbing the tree with a reasonable amount of risk taking. And no dad explains though to the mom, you know, when that child climbs a tree, he actually increases his IQ. Have you ever heard a dad say that to a mom? But we now know that that's true, that the child's sy synapses are firing uh, ferociously uh, when they're trying to figure out which branch to go on and how far to go in that branch and what can I do to get higher without falling out of the tree. And so the child with that checks and balance parenting got the best of both worlds. He got the safety and the lack of concussion and also got the experience of having that constant decision-making about where do I take the risk and where do I not take the risk. And that's the decision-making that helps a child feel comfortable with risk-taking. And, and if we look at one of the contributions that dads make to the parenting process is encouragement of risk-taking. Um, going out into you know ski skiing, you fall down, you hurt yourself, you cry, maybe I don't wanna ski again. Sweetie, okay, I'll hug you here for a minute. But go back and try again, you know. And that's that's a dad's uh, and that risk taking. When we don't allow fathers to do that, it hurts 
not only boys, but also girls. Well, as part of that discussion, we now all need to have as parents and grandparents is to look at this incredible research here that shows that with these societal changes, many desirable outcomes have emerged. Girls are doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. And a great deal of the things that were restrictive for them, that held them back, mm -hmm. prevented them from reaching their potential. Many of those ceilings have been smashed. Yeah. And you paint a picture of girls um, uh, not being as badly damaged, still damaged mm -hmm. by family breakup. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, I think I have your numbers right. You say in the 147 American cities today, girls in their 30s will be by about 8% on average higher earners than boys. Yes. And this opens up all sorts of new challenges that hadn't been foreseen, not least of which is that many boys then don't feel there's a place for them. Their protector provider instincts are compromised or not needed. Absolutely. Girls don't. Where do go, they go? Girls don't go looking th at unemployment lines for sensitive boys to become future fathers. <laughs> they, this, they want boys who are good providers and they want boys who are competent and they want boys who, um, you know, who are not part of the boy crisis, uh, who are not failures to launch. And so the boy, attending to the boy crisis is one of the best things we can do for our daughters because I want for my daughter as well. Can, can you just say that again? Because I think that is, yes. a, that is an incredible line. Attending a, to the boy a, crisis. Attending to the boy crisis is one of the very best things we can do for our daughters yeah. because I want for my daughter to be able to marry a boy who is worthy of her love. And fortunately, my daughter, ha the daughter that's married, has a male who is definitely worthy of her love, one of the most loving, caring uh, husbands and a good breadwinner at the same time. Well, we share that in common too. Yes, yes, you were telling me about yeah. your children too and your son and how proud you are of him. And, and you know, uh, I see your heart come through your eyes when you talk about your son and your grandson. And son-in-law, I'm very yes, frankly there yes, looking after my daughter. Um, I'll get all mushy in a minute. Yes, yeah, but no, this is really important stuff. Two males crying here. <laughs> so white male males <laughs> <Yeah>. crying. <laughs> But your research show that perhaps we just haven't appreciated how solid many dads' instincts are when it comes to their contribution. I noticed with our kids, they look to mum from a very early age for warmth and nurture, mm -hmm. it seemed, me for play and stimulation, mm -hmm. all are necessary. Mm -hmm. But one of the things to draw out of this, I think, is that it would be Good, you know, there's a lot of support for women. There's a lot of ways in which they can go out and learn about their role, mm -hmm. what the kids need from them. Mm -hmm. Governments even are in it. Yes. But we don't do the same. As you say, I was unaware of quite a bit of this research until I read the book. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm working now with the White House and one of the things I'm suggesting to them is to create, if you want to make America great again, you make a, the American family great again. And if you want to make the American family great again, you don't focus on no child left behind until you understand that a child will be left behind if you leave a parent behind. And so trying to create a program called No Parent Left Behind. Uh, but that means having to make sure that, the, that males are trained well to be good fathers. So we're suggesting the creation of a father warrior program because in the old days boys sense of purpose came from being warriors but today with a few a need for fewer boys in war oftentimes boys have a purpose void and when boys have a purpose void plus a dad void that's when they often become destructive and so i'm, I'm suggesting now that there be a father warrior program to begin to train boys to be involved with the family at a very early age, to know how to change, uh, feed their sister uh, when you know when their sister is very young, or their brother when their uh, brother is very young, to know how to babysit, to know how to communicate. I'm suggesting that in all elementary schools, there be uh, one of the core curriculum that's required every year is communication skills training, so that boys don't bully other boys, so that boys can listen to girls, so that girls can listen to boys, uh, so we know how to listen to each other and over 
overcome those natural propensities just to be me, me, me. And the more the culture becomes me, 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 the more communication skills is important. So I'm looking at communication skills training in elementary schools, but also among, I try to up to scale what I do with, around the country with communication skills training for couples and saying you can have children trained to be good communicators and not to become and to become undefensive to personal criticism and then learn that at school if they go home and they see their their mother and father arguing defensively they'll lose respect for their mother and father and therefore the the family will be destabilized in a different way so you have to have good good communication skills from parents good communication skills from children and then you have to have things like family dinner nights um, so that children um, so that mothers and fathers learn how to conduct a family family dinner night, so it does not become a family dinner nightmare. It is really important, isn't it, that we, I think we understand that we, as, as we, the message here is that we all lose when one sex loses, we all gain yes. if boys are not doing as well and we can start to correct that. You know. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.